Good morning. You made it. I'm so grateful that you all made it here safe. Uh, just a quick announcement about that. Uh, our official policies here at the church state that anytime District 11 is closed, the church offices will be closed. And for some reason, they never close the schools on Sundays. I don't know. But we're in the middle of talking through what it might look like for us to have a policy when it's not safe out that we might uh, say no church on Sundays. Um, but I'm grateful that you all made it here safely. And as a quick reminder, uh, for any of you that are here in person, you can always worship online. So if you're ever feeling like the roads might not be safe or there's too much snow outside or you just wake up and you're not feeling great that day, uh, you can watch online through a number of different methods, through Zoom, Facebook, our website, our app. Technically now we're on YouTube. Uh, we also are posting little snippets from the sermons and from the worship services on Instagram and TikTok. So if you're on any of those places, or you know anybody that's on any of those places, I encourage you to look at our stuff there. And it's a great place we found, especially those short snippets on YouTube, Instagram, and TikTok. You know, if you just want to share 30 seconds of inspiration with somebody you know, those are an easy, digestible way to send somebody something and say, hey, check this out. Here's a testimony somebody gave in church last week, or check this out. Here's 30 seconds from the sermon. I hope this brightens your day. All right, a couple of quick announcements as we get started this morning. Uh, I'm going to send around this bulletin board that's got a new name tag requests on it. I noticed that some of the name tags out there are, you know, few and far between. Uh, I know I could probably use a new name tag just because I keep losing mine, uh, and then it turns up under a couch cushion or something like that. Um, but we're going to get these ordered at some point soon, so we're going to send this bulletin board around. If you need a new name tag, write down your name, your phone number, whether you need a pin or a magnet. I know some of you out there, if you've got pacemakers, perhaps the magnet doesn't work for you uh, or would not be safe for you. Um, so let us know. And also make sure you spell your name legibly. Uh, if you write your name and you misspell it, then we will misspell it on the name tag too. All right. As always, you can find the announcements, all the stuff going on in the life of the church in your bulletins every single week. So if there's something you're not sure about, if there's something you want to know about, take the bulletin home, put it on your fridge. It's a good way to make sure you've got the updated uh, list of what's going on in the church. Another thing is that we do have our adult Sunday school that's going to start up this next week. Uh, that is based on this book, uh, Good Enough. This is also going to be the book that I'm going to be preaching out of throughout all of Lent. And it's a book of 40-ish devotions for a life of imperfection. And I love this because throughout Lent, what we're going to be doing is looking at the ways that we can say, life is imperfect, we as humans are imperfect, and that's okay. Rather than approaching Lent with a sense of uh, repentance and uh, overbearing uh, acknowledgement of our sinful nature, we're going to acknowledge that we are imperfect and that God loves us anyway. And that's what we're doing through Lent. So if you want to be a part of that adult Sunday school, you can get the book. We've got some copies out there in the back. Uh, and I encourage you, even if you just stop in for one week or two, um, that we're trying to make the Sunday school class as easy for drop-ins as possible. So if you just show up to church that week and then you come down for the Sunday school class just one week, that's going to be fine. If you don't have the book, that's going to be fine. It's going to be easy to engage in that Sunday school class. Uh, so again, that's starting next week, February 11th, uh, after the service with kind of a pre-class class before we get into Lent. Uh, as always, we've got our Wi-Fi code in the bulletins and up on the screen. So if you need to get access on your phone on the Wi-Fi, that's the best way to do it. All right, next announcement. We've got our February mission for the month is Care and Share. Uh, they're a food bank that serves many other food banks. And one of the things I love about Care and Share is that they are able to take small donations and make a huge impact. I don't even remember what it is, the amount of food that they can buy with a single dollar of donation, uh, but it's far more than you and I can buy at the grocery store because of the power of buying in bulk that Care and Share is just doing such wonderful work. So if you make a donation and you write it out to the February mission, our monthly mission for February is Care and Share. You can find more information about that in your bulletin. All right. We've talked a little bit about Quiet Disciple nominations before. Uh, today is the last day 
to get your nominations in for that Quiet Disciple Award. Um, just a reminder that this is uh, something that we use to recognize people who have been in a uh, lifetime of service uh, through their service uh, in the church and a lifetime of often unrecognized service. So the hard thing about this is that usually we're trying to find somebody who is kind of been hidden through the woodwork, and they've been working in the background, and they're not the first person who's going to jump up and say, ooh, me, 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 I'm the quiet disciple. Uh, usually it's hard to find this person, but if you've got a, do uh, a nomination for quiet disciple that you haven't turned in yet, uh, you can just give that to me or put it in the offering. Uh, even I would say, you know, if you just write down a name on uh, your prayer request and write down, you know, five things you like about that person, we'll consider it. We'll be meeting this week, uh, church council chair, our lay leader, and myself to make that decision. All right. Next up, we do have a new member class after church today. Uh, that'll be online and in person. I'll make it a hybrid meeting. So just a quick going over, if you want to be a new member here, if you want to join this church, or let's say you were a member of a different church, you want to transfer your membership in. Uh, I encourage you to come get a little refresher on some Methodist history, some history about our church and what membership might mean to you, and we'll discuss what next steps might look like for you. Uh, and with that, a good reminder, we do not have official fellowship downstairs. I know some of the folks that were in charge of fellowship couldn't get out of their houses this morning. Uh, their streets were really badly um, icy. And so, you know, if you go downstairs and you realize there's no cookies, there's no punch, there's no coffee... Uh, then maybe you ought to sign up for fellowship in the, in the coming weeks. But um, this week, we'll just have that adult Sunday school class. There may be some coffee, but I'm not positive. So, um, all right. We talked about Lent a little bit. And Lent is the upcoming season of preparation leading up to Easter. And some churches, like especially in the Catholic Church, they give things up during Lent. And sometimes preparing for that giving things up, they have a giant feast on the Tuesday before Ash Wednesday when Lent begins. This year, we're going to have a Shrove Tuesday pancake dinner that's going to be hosted by our youth group. It's a combined youth group of us and Calvary United Methodist Churches, and it'll be at 5 o'clock downstairs, and that's actually going to be February 13th. Uh, I know the screen says 11th. It's the 13th. The 11th the Sunday. 13th Shrove Tuesday, make sure you show up on Tuesday. If you show up for Shrove Tuesday and it's not a Tuesday, we won't have pancakes. Um, so 5 o'clock Shrove Tuesday, we'll have a youth fundraiser pancake dinner, and it'll be a good time. All right, I know there's lots of announcements this week. This is why I always encourage you to look at your bulletins. Uh, one of the last couple things here is that uh, we do have our upcoming district gathering. Uh, we are the Eastern South Central Colorado District. And that's all the churches kind of from here to the south border of Colorado and from here out east. Uh, and we're going to have our district gathering on Sunday, March 2nd. There's information about it in your bulletin. And lucky for us, it is local here. We're going to be meeting right at Calvary Methodist Church right up the street off of Austin Bluffs. So uh, if you're interested in coming to that and seeing what we've got going on as a district or coming to celebrate that that's when we will announce uh, at the district gathering will announce and recognize our quiet disciple uh, recipient. So lots of information about that in your bulletins. Okay, last thing, we're going to sing happy birthday to all of those folks that have birthdays in February. So if you've got a birthday, or I would even say if your wedding has a birthday, if you've got an anniversary in February, why don't you stand at this point and we will sing to you our happy birthday song. We continue into week five of our worship series today. The book of Psalms knows all about the ups and downs of life, written over a span of time from exile and isolation to the rebuilding of the community. We hope that you will see how the poetry of the Psalms can accompany us in this, in this um, series. We will be reminded that through it all, we can trust that God is indeed holding our lives. 
One mode of poetry in the Psalms is an all-out praise and thanksgiving, such as the one today. We also find praise even in the Psalms of lament and complaint, because God is good all the time, and all the time God is good. Life is not always good, but when we engage in gratitude, we remember the evidence that God is at work in our lives. And we remember that indeed. God is holding our lives even now. Let us pray. Amazing God, you do wonderful things, big and small, every day. Open us this day to recognize the miracles of life all around us so that we might stay resilient and ready to create your reign on earth as it is in heaven. Please stand as you are able, either in body or in spirit, and join in singing hymn number 139, Praise to the Lord Almighty.
peace of Christ be with you. And also with you. Will you make a gesture of extending your cupped hands toward others who may be with or near you as a sign of offering the peace of Christ gives us? And if you are alone, place your cupped hands over your heart as a sign that you send your heartfelt peace out to the world. Let us now sing together our song, Put Peace into Each Other's Hands. Stand and pass the peace of Christ as the children come forward for mystery box. All right, as y'all are uh, finishing up passing the peace of Christ and the kids are coming down, oh, well, hold on to it. Um, as the kids are coming down, uh, we're doing a thing called Mystery Box. If you're new with us uh, here in person or online, uh, the Mystery Box is a thing that we do with our kids where somebody takes home the box and they bring us a random item every week. And uh, this week, Marge Erickson had the box and she called me and said, I'm not going to be able to make it. The roads aren't great. I don't have a ride. Is it okay? And I said, that's fine, because what we'll do if we don't have a mystery box is we'll just say, somebody has a random item. You know, sometimes we call it mystery purse. So somebody grabs something out of their purse, and Molly said she's got something off her keychain. Hold on, hold on. Just hold it. So I have no idea what this is, but she said she had something that came off her keychain, and we'll see what it is. So... Uh, Also, quick reminder, before we do Mystery Box, I forgot to mention that uh, if you haven't been with us throughout this series, we do have a moment of testimony in the service where if you're feeling called to give a little sharing moment, uh, letting us know how God has been holding your life um, through either the good or the bad or everything in between, uh, I encourage you to do that. And if you're out there at home, I wanted to let you know that we will be having communion here in the service. Uh, So if you want to just grab your elements, uh, some juice, some crackers, whatever you've got at home, uh, we believe that God will work through our connection 
and give you communion in that, the same grace-filled way that we receive it here in the building. Uh, you don't have to be physically present for God's grace to be at work in your life. Can I get an amen? All right, just making sure you're awake. All right, let's check out what we've got in the mystery keychain this week. So hold it, and let's, let's see. So, it's obviously not alive. It's not dead. I, I would say shake it, but we wouldn't be able to hear your hand. So let's just have a raised hand if you want to guess what Molly has brought us this week. What do you think? I think it could be a keychain. Key could be a keychain? Could be one of the rings you put the keys on. Twinkle, what do you think? Could be a dog treat. Okay. Anybody? Anybody over here? Choir. Just shout it out. What's that? A teddy bear keychain. House keys. Safety pin. Oh, I know what it probably is. Okay. Maybe. What do you think? A lock pick. You, who knew, you know? <laughs> keys are great for a lot of things, and lock picks are good for when you don't have keys, I guess. Um, all right, well, let's check it out, and let's see. Oh, it is not what I thought it was. I thought it was going to be a car key, but it's not. It is a Wendy's card, uh, one free Frosty Junior per transaction, per visit, per key, with any restaurant purchase, offer expires, 1231.24. Valid only at participating locations, not for resale. Okay. So it is a tiny little Wendy's Frosty that is a reminder that you can take this and get a free Frosty whenever you want. It's pretty cool, huh? So any story behind this free Frosty keychain thing? Or is it just... You just have to make a donation. Oh, that's right, because it does say the Dave Thomas Foundation for Adoption. So... If you make a foundation donation to the Dave Thomas Foundation, apparently you can get a free Frosty at Wendy's. Uh, Wendy's will be sending you an invoice for the commercial later. Just kidding. Um, so, you know, this is, um, yeah, gosh, I don't know what to say about that. Free Frosties. You know, it, it reminds me, so this is kind of fun, because if you carry this with you, um, I went and got a coffee this morning, too, and uh, like may maybe some of you did, um, but I went and got a coffee, and I pulled up my little coffee app, and it said, by the way, you've got some rewards. You can get a free coffee. And I was like, oh my gosh, I'll have to redeem that. And this is a nice thing for a free Frosty. But, you know, the thing about these is that they are only good if you remember that you have them, right? And so what this reminds me of is God's grace and forgiveness, which costs us what? Say it louder for the people in the back. Costs us? It's free. That's right. It costs us nothing. God's grace and forgiveness is available to us for free. We don't even have to make a donation. We don't have to have uh, a coupon. We don't have to have a cool little frosty thing that goes on our keychain. God's grace and forgiveness is available to us at no cost. Right? We just need to know that we have it. Sometimes we forget that God offers God's grace and forgiveness, and we don't, even, we don't even know, we don't accept it, we forget about it. And so let this be your reminder, as I give this back to you, Molly, that God's grace and forgiveness is available to you for no cost. You don't even have to turn in a coupon for it. Pretty cool, huh? All right, let's say a prayer. Say, dear God, thank you for Frosties. Thank you for your forgiveness. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for the freedom you give us. God, we appreciate that you don't make us pay a thing. That your grace is free. That forgiveness is free. We just have to remember you love us. Help us, God, to love other people just like Jesus loves us. Amen.
All right. So I would normally give out the mystery box to whoever is going to bring it next week, but I'm hoping that Marge can bring it next week. So she'll bring it next week, and then I'll give it out the week after. Okay? Sound good? So you guys are free to go off with uh, Val and Donnie down to Sunday school or back with whoever brought you, and we are going to continue in our time of worship. This morning's reading is Psalm 111. Praise the Lord. I will give thanks to the Lord with my whole heart in the company of the upright in the congregation. Great are the works of the Lord, studied by all who delight in him. Full of honor and majesty is his work, and his righteousness endures forever. He has gained renown by his wonderful deeds. The Lord is gracious and merciful. He provides food for those who fear him. He is ever mindful of his covenant. He has shown his people the power of his works in giving them the heritage of the nations. The works of his hands are faithful and just. All his precepts are trustworthy. They are established forever and ever to be performed with faithfulness and uprightness. He sent redemption to his people. He has commanded his covenant forever. Holy and awesome are his name. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, and all who practice it have a good understanding. His praise endures forever. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. So there were a couple of nuns that were driving down the road one day when they ran out of gas. And they pulled over on the side of the road because they had run out of gas and they waited for somebody to come and help them. Eventually this truck driver stopped by and said, well, what do you need? And the nun said, well, we need some gas because we ran out. He said, well, I don't have any gas uh, other than what I've got in the tank. I've got no way to get it for you. And there's a town about a half a mile back we could walk to, but I don't have even a gas canister that I could use to get the gas into the tank, but I I do have, I guess, the only container I've got is this old bedpan here in the truck. So I took the bedpan, made sure it was empty, and the nuns and the truck driver walked into town. They filled it up with some gasoline and walked back out to the car, and there they were pouring from the bedpan into the tank when somebody passed by and said, now that must be a lot of faith. Not sure I would advise that method of making sure you've got a full tank of gas. Might ask yourself, have you ever run out of gas? Raise your hand. Have you, have you ever run out of gas? It's not embarrassing. I've done it a couple times. I also was reminded the other day that there was one time I pulled away from the gas tank while filling up. Left the uh, thing in there. Don't do that either. But I will say, running out of gas is something we've probably almost all of us have done, or if not, we've gotten close. It's a thing we even joke about in our Methodist conference office with some of our superintendents that do a lot of driving, and uh, there's the game that they play, which is how close can you get to zero without running out? It's kind of a joke. It's not a real game. Don't play that game. How often have we found ourselves running out of gas? I hope that for you, it's been a long time since this has happened to you in a vehicle, but the gas gauge in our car is usually, if it's working right, it's a pretty easy gauge to read. You just look at it and it tells you when you're full, it tells you when you're empty, it tells you when you're somewhere in between. Some of the cars nowadays even tell you you got 27 miles until empty, and if your car is like mine and you're really lucky, you've got about 40 miles past zero, and that way you don't run out of gas because you see that zero often. (laughs) But sometimes the gauge in our hearts for when we're running out of gas is not as obvious or easy to read. We have a gauge in our hearts, I think, when we're running out of gas that I think is filled up by gratefulness, by gratitude, by thanksgiving, by praise. I think those are the things, and maybe you've got something else you can think of. Just answer this question for yourself. What is it that fills your tank? 
What is it that fills your tank? What is it that gets you up and going in the morning? And what is it that, if you're not careful and you don't pay attention to it, that you might run out of gas? I bet if I was to ask everybody in this room to list out 10 things that you're upset by this week, it'd be pretty easy to come up with that list. 10 things. Just look outside. You're like, well, it was hard getting out of the house. It's icy. It's cold. It's, you know, very easy to come up with that list. But what if I were to ask you to write down 10 things you're grateful for? Is that list as easy to put together as the list of complaints? We are hardwired, I think, as human nature to see what is missing. I'm I'm guessing this is something that served us really, really well when we were hunting and gathering a long time ago, that we could see the things that we wanted to complain about, like there's no food, right? If you had no food, that'd be something worth complaining about. And if you complained about it, something might get done about it. You've all heard the the phrase, the squeaky wheel gets the grease, right? Well, if you complain that there's no food, somebody might find just some food. This is helpful. But then there's stuff nowadays that you can complain about and it won't get any better. There's stuff that we can feel sorry for ourselves about and it won't fix anything. Because a lot of our complaints are complaints we have because they're not easy to fix, right? If you were complaining that it's too dark in your house, you might be able to flip a light switch, and suddenly it's not so dark. You probably wouldn't even complain. You just go to the light switch, you turn it on. The things that we find frustrating in life are the things that are hard to fix, But I think some of these things can be overcome with a sense of gratitude. Our tanks can be filled back up with a sense of gratitude. So even though we are hardwired to see what is missing, we're hardwired to acknowledge what's not there, I think it's going to benefit our souls a little bit better if we take a page from the psalmist and if we give gratitude for what we do have in times when it's good and in times when it's not good. If you read through the psalm for today, the psalmist in this very short passage in Psalm 111 gives six different things that they are grateful for. The psalmist gives gratitude for God's great works, praising God for his great works, described as studied by all who delight in them. The works include the creation, the miracles God performs for Israel, his ongoing acts of providence and deliverance. The psalmist gives thanks for God's righteousness and God's grace. The psalmist give thanks for God's faithfulness and God's justice. The psalmist give thanks for God's trustworthiness, for God's provision, and for respect. And it says fear, but often we read the word fear, we think fear like fear and trembling. And fear most often is translated better, respect, reverence. The psalmist gives thanks for fear and reverence of the Lord and for wisdom. Here in the course of just a a few few short verses, the psalmist lists all these things to give thanks for. And I know if you've ever had a hard day, it can be a challenge to even name a few things. But certainly we can all give thanks we got up this morning. We can all give thanks that we can draw breath today. We can give thanks that even though the moisture outside is in the form of annoying, crunchy, snow that's really turned to ice and it's dreadful to drive on, we can give thanks that there is moisture that will water the crops, that will water the grass, that will water the trees, that will provide water for our reservoirs, that will get filtered and become water for our homes. What are the things that if we work hard to find that we can give thanks for? I found it really interesting yesterday. Yesterday was cookie delivery day in the Girl Scouts world. Uh, How many of you like Girl Scout cookies? Okay. That's why Rachel and Amberly aren't here this morning, because yesterday was cookie delivery day, and chaos descended upon our house (laughs) in the form of about 7,000 boxes of Girl Scout cookies um, for the whole troop, not just for our kids, but 7,000 boxes of Girl Scout cookies that had to get picked up from the distribution center, which was at the Rocky Mountain Vibe Stadium, And so I had the fortune of getting to drive the U-Haul truck to go pick up the cookies at the Rocky Mountain Vibes Stadium. So I arrived promptly at noon when our time was to sit there and get ready to get the cookies. 
And because of the storm that, in case you didn't know, we had a storm yesterday. Because of the storm that rolled in, I was there until 3.30, waiting in line to get Girl Scout cookies. I was the last one in our appointments to get the Girl Scout cookies. And I'm glad because we were able to get the cookies. There were folks getting cookies at New Life Church up north. They had to shut down their location. Folks getting cookies up in Denver. They had to shut down their locations. But as I drove through the last bit of the line, the person came up and I expected the person to say, I'm so sorry the wait has been so long. I, you know, I hope you're doing okay. But it was clear that they had had a long day as people were griping at this person, complaining about all the things that are quite frankly out of our control. But instead of griping or complaining or instead of apologizing, the Girl Scout volunteer walked up to me and she simply said, thank you so much for your patience. And it reminded me of something I heard a long time ago, which was that any time that you feel like apologizing, that most of the time you can replace an apology with a thank you. You just have to rephrase what it is you're saying. I want you to think for a moment. Let's say you're running late for an appointment. You could show up late and say, I'm so sorry for being late. Or you could show up and say, thank you for still letting me in, even though I'm late. Two different perspectives. One says, I messed up, I'm so sorry. And don't get me wrong, there are places you've got to apologize when you mess up. But one of them says, I messed up, I'm sorry. And it puts the other person in the place where they look at you saying, well, yeah, you should be sorry because you messed up. The other one says, I'm so grateful for the grace that has been offered. And it gives the other person the chance to say, I guess I'll offer grace. Which relationship do we want to be in? The adversarial, apologetic relationship or the relationship with grace, forgiveness, and gratitude. It makes a difference. Like I said, it doesn't work for everything. Sometimes you mess up, you got to apologize. But sometimes you can give thanks for the other person, offering grace even before it gets offered. Instead of at a restaurant, the server saying, I'm so sorry it took a while to get you your table, if they said, thank you for your patience, we can seat you now. The first one offers the ability for you to complain and think, well, yeah, it took forever to get at our table. The second one says, oh, I'm a patient person. I didn't even know that. <laughs> Surprise. And we offer gratitude. To me, this is one of the best ways we can fill our tank. I could go on for a long time about this, and I usually do around Thanksgiving about gratitude, about the psychological benefits that gratitude can play in our lives of being a grateful and thankful person. Gratitude can change your life. After all, we have so much to be grateful for. The freedom that God's grace and forgiveness is offered to us at no cost. The meal, which we're going to sit and eat or kneel and eat at the railing. Communion that God offers us for free, free of charge. So I invite you today, as you take communion, try this one thing. When you come forward and you receive the bread and you receive the juice, say, thanks be to God. That's it. One tiny phrase. I'll say the body of Christ broken for you, the cup of life poured out for you, and you respond, thanks be to God. Let that be the seed of gratitude, the seed of praise, the seed of thanksgiving that will sprout for you a vineyard of God's grace and a vineyard of praise for the grace that is offered to us at no cost. I want to transition now. I've told you some of the things I'm grateful for this week, like getting Girl Scout cookies on time. Well, not on time. 
getting Girl Scout cookies in the first place. Grateful for the opportunity to be in service helping my daughter in that way. Grateful for the opportunity to be here before you. Grateful for the sunshine today. But I want to know what you're grateful for. I want to know what you appreciate about the ways that God has been holding your life. So raise your hand if you want, and I'll come around to you. And uh, as we share, I invite After we're done hearing the person, we'll sing our God is holding your life song. And then go ahead and raise your hand right away, and I'll see the next person while we're singing the song. That way we can get through this and then move into communion in a little bit. So I saw a hand back here. I'm going to go take our first testimony. I just want to say that I'm grateful for the blessing of ordinary days. Did y'all hear that? It was so so small, but so big. I'm going to repeat it, if that's all right. That you are thankful for the blessing of ordinary days. How powerful. Let us sing. And while we're singing, raise your hand if you'd like to be the next person. God is holding your life. God is holding your life. Last year, my family moved into a hotel for what we thought would be two week, up to two months stay while I found a new place to live. Two months turned into almost nine months. Four Saturdays ago, we did our normal thing going to a game store, and I was talking with somebody I'd never met before. We had to be out of our hotel in a week to find a new hotel. He offered us his two bedrooms in his basement. Didn't expect anything of it. We went and saw his house. That night, we signed the contract and he helped us move a week later. We have been living in two, in two bedrooms in a basement of a house for two weeks, something we never thought we'd find. Thank you for sharing your testimony. Let's sing, and raise your hand if you'd like to be the next person. for all of you, which Marge, I'm going to tell you, includes you. We're grateful for you, which are our church as well. So let us sing acknowledging the gratitude for all of us that are the church. Raise your hand. weather yesterday, our son brought our two grandchildren down to visit us, and I'm very grateful for a safe journey for them all. The gratitude for safe journeys amidst the storm. Let us sing.
to make uh, a little bit shorter time for our service, including communion. We've taken out this week's Selah moment and the prayers of the people, um, and we're just going to move right into uh, a pastoral prayer led by Twink and then into our Lord's Prayer. Would you pray with me, please? Holy Spirit of God, please show each and every one what is ours to do so that we can ease the pain of our hurting world. We believe in the power of prayer, but we also know that if a need arises, just saying, I will pray for you, is just not good enough. Let us strive to live the words of the fruits of the Spirit with God's help every single day. And they are love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. God, we know that it's not easy every day. Sometimes it is just a matter of keeping our mouth shut just because we think that we don't have to say it. We're doing a kindness to someone who we don't even know. So I'd ask God that now that we have a moment of silence so that each and every one here and all those listening could just say to you, God help me, and then fill in the blank with whatever is on your heart. Let us now say together the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. We are all invited to the gift of this table of grace. As a response to the invitation, we are asked to let go of all that separates us from accepting this grace. We confess the ways we have placed hardship in the hands of others rather than peace. Let us sing. Put peace into each other's hands and love. in each other's hands, we place love in all the hands of the world. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. And this is your part to respond. Glory to God. Amen. Let us sing now.
The Lord be with you. Open your hearts, your mouths, your lives to the Holy One. We long for this communion. Let us give our greatest thanks in the company of the Beloved. It is a good and joyful thing to give our thanks and grace. Gift of life, creator of all that is, you have breathed life into us, filled our emptiness, loved us through our resistance. And so we gather and give thanks in this moment. We stop so we may listen. We breathe so we may live. And we open so we may love. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you, God, and blessed be your work in Jesus, peace giver, life healer, spirit anointer. Do your work in us as in him. May we proclaim peace, recovery, liberty, and the end of all oppression. May we savor the taste of goodness and offer this gift of love to all. We remember as Jesus gathered with his disciples, his friends, his family, he took the bread, he said, thanks for it. He gave it to his companions and said, take and eat. This is my body. My life is given for love of you. So whenever you gather together, stop. Selah. Think of me. Be at peace. I am here. After supper, he lifted the cup. He gave thanks over it. He offered it to his companions saying, drink from this cup all of you, as often as you do so. Remember me. This is my life poured out for you. And whenever, whenever you gather, stop. Salah. Think of me. Be at peace. I am here. Let us sing. And so in remembrance of your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim together this mystery of our faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Holy Spirit, breath of wind. Fill us, transform us. Holy Spirit, lover of justice. Holy Spirit, maker of unity. And all of God's people say, Amen. Amen. Let us sing. many and are one body, one loaf, rising in spirit together. Even if we are not physically in the same place, we are one in love. We are one in the grace of Christ, broken open for us. And while we have many cups, God's love is poured upon us from the one cup of salvation. It is in this sharing beyond all time and space that we are drawn close. We are made whole and we are made free. As you are served by those with you, are served by your own hand. 
Know that the hand that serves you is the hand of all of Christ's body. Through mystical union with the divine, you are not alone. So good friends, at this point, the communion servers can come forward to help me serve communion. As you come forward down the side aisles and receive communion, I invite you to come forward, kneel at the railing, and cup your hands open to receive. If you need gluten-free, we have gluten-free available. Just let us know. And if you struggle to come down, just wave down one of the ushers, and we'll get to you as soon as we're done serving up front. Another thing to note is that as we receive communion here, if you're at home, you can take your communion at any point. When you're done taking your communion from the railing, you can get up and then return to your seats. And the last thing that I need to let you know is that here in the United Methodist Church, we believe in an open communion table, which means that communion is open to all. You don't have to be of a certain age. You don't have to be a church member. You don't have to even know why you're here if you just stumbled into church this morning. All you have to know is that you have been invited by Christ to come and receive this meal, and this meal is available to you. You don't have to take it, but it is made available to you. No cost. Free. Don't even need to have a coupon. So let us come and receive communion at this table, not because you've been invited by me, not because you've been invited by St. Paul's, but because you've been invited by Christ to this table. Let us feast.
God of all that is too deep for words, we give you thanks that at this table of grace you offer your holiness, your steadfast love. Open us to your salah, your pause, to hear the needs of your people. We pray this in the name of the host of this table, Jesus the Christ. Amen. I don't know if you know this or not, but God loves each and every one of us, just as we are, and he loves us unconditionally. And we honor God by bringing a portion of our blessings to the storehouse so that it can be used for the workings of the church and beyond. We have all said to God at one time or another, God, help me. He answers sometimes, and sometimes we say, God, I have no idea how you're going to make this work so that I would have enough money to do this and honor my tithe. But somehow, sometimes, all the time, God is faithful because we are sometimes God's hands extended.
Let us pray. God, we have so much to be grateful for. For the breath in our lungs, for the blood in our veins, for the bread and juice in our tummies, for the ability to be grateful and the ability to be generous. God, we ask that you would bless these gifts that have been given here, bless the hands that have given them, bless the hearts that have given them, bless those who struggle to even be able to give, bless this church, Lord. Let this church be a beacon of your hope, sharing your goodness and grace and being a testament to the freedom of your grace that exists in all lives. In the name of Jesus the Christ, we give thanks and say, Amen. Would you stand as you are able in body? and spirit and join in singing with me hymn number 158 come christians join and sing translation of Alleluia means praise the Lord. Alleluia, amen. Praise the Lord, amen. The Alleluia, the Yah is short for Yahweh. Praise the Lord. As we sing Alleluia, as we sing Alleluia with every moment that is our life, let us give thanks for all that God has given us. Let us be changed from the inside out so that you might go forth and you might change the world. Go forth, good friends, and change the world. Amen and amen.